England, uh, and as part of my role, I spend a couple of days each week working out of Coventry. So this isn't the only chance that you get to either hear me or speak to me. Uh, I've been here since January and will continue through this year, the next year, and then um, into 2021 as well. I'm joined by a number of colleagues, some of whom are upstairs and I may have spoken to them. They're relationship managers, uh, one of which is Olivia, oh no, it's Bryony who's here, sorry. Who, who does a similar job to Olivia. But um, Bryony, who, who's a relationship manager for Visual Arts. Our relationship managers actually have far more experience of talking to potential applicants about fineries around project grants. Uh, my role is I sit on the decision making panel, so I see it from that end. So I'm generally in charge of doing the overview presentation, but actually it is always useful to talk to relationship managers about finer details. Um, as I say, I'm, I'm in the city so I can connect you up with those people and we will be doing additional Meet the Funder events going through the year as well, so you get to do that. Um, I'm also joined by Sophia, who is our Business Administrator Apprentice, uh, a key musician across a multitude of um, instruments and a strong advocate for apprenticeships. So if you're interested in apprenticeships, you get an extra and you can talk to Sophia about that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about our National Lottery uh, Project Grants programme. Uh, and I'll explain the type of things which it can fund, who can apply to it, how we make our decisions. Uh, for those people who like to write, to take down information and learn that way, and I know that's what I do, that's absolutely fine, but there is, all this information is on our website, and I'll talk about that as well. And in fact, even more information is, is there. So, that's, um, that was this slide. And then I shall do this. So I'm going to give a very brief introduction to the Arts Council. Some of you may know the Arts Council. So we are the National Development Agency for Arts and Culture in this country, which basically means that we advocate for, we develop and we invest in arts and cultural activities. If, if I wanted to sum it up in six words, those so six words would be great art and culture for everybody. So if you like, that's our strap line, that's what we are about. Underneath that there are five goals and I'm going to briefly just touch on them so that you're aware of one. Uh, goal one is excellent, so if you like, that's the great art and culture bit. So we want to support arts and cultural activity which is of high quality, which when people come in contact to it, it has a powerful effect upon them. It moves them, it connects, connects with them. That's the excellence bit. Goal two is for everyone, so it's not just doing it for yourselves. This is public money, so how does it engage with the public? And across a range of projects, we want everybody to feel that the work which the Arts Council is supporting has a meaning and an importance and a value to them. Goal three is about resilience and sustainability. So that's about supporting arts and cultural organisations who are going through a period of change. And we possibly all are going through a period of change. But how do those businesses adapt and make sure that they are the strongest financially that they can be to cope with the various changes which they're having to deal with? And the sustainability is about how they note the environmental impact of what they're doing and how can they make sure that that's positive rather than negative. Goal four is to do with the workforce, so to make sure that it's a diverse workforce in the arts and culture, and that people have the opportunity to develop their skills and be up to date and to respond to new changes, for instance, technology, digital work. And finally, goal five, children and young people. One, because they are practitioners now, uh, they are audiences now, uh, uh, but they will also become the arts organisations, the cultural organisations, the cultural leaders and the audiences of, of the future, so we want to support that. Running through all, the, all of those is the creative case for diversity. It's useful for you to be aware of that. So uh, many of you probably are more familiar with people talking about the business case for this. And it's 
They explain why financially it makes sense that you do something. Um, the creative case for diversity is about saying that there is a wealth of cultural backgrounds and expertise in this country, which actually, when it's brought together, can create work which is surprising and enriching and amazing. Um, and we want to make sure that the work that we support truly represents the range of practitioners and people within this country. And, and because you weren't at the earlier one, so I'll use the same example. I suppose an example of that which I saw in November last year, and it was actually on television, it was uh, the dance group Kanduko, who performed as part of Strictly Dancing, dancing with the professionals. And they did an incredible piece in which they were all absolutely excellent whether they were in wheelchairs or not. And it was uh, a very powerful um, and moving piece which they did. So if you wanted just one example of where I think the creative case is demonstrated, that was, that was it. That's the Arts Council. Um, project Grant, there are a number of funding programmes. The most relevant one which I'm concentrating on as part of this presentation is Project Grants. It's an open program, you can apply at any time. Uh, if you're applying for under £15,000, you hear within six weeks of pressing the button and submitting your application. If you're applying for over £15,000, then you hear within three months of pressing the button. You can apply for a minimum of £1,000, a maximum of £100,000. There are occasions when it's over that, but it's best they are exceptional. Uh, and if you wanted to know what type of projects they are, we publish all the organisations and individuals who are successful on our website, and you can see the rain and the amounts, so you can see how rare it is for us to make a project grant award of over £100,000. Um, so, it is for arts activity. So it has to relate to an arts activity, and there's a broad range of art forms which you can, which, which is covered by that term. Um, museum practice, museums can apply if they are accredited for work which directly relates to their core objectives. So if you like, that's the one where there is an exception in terms of art. It could be cultural for accredited museums, but otherwise museums can apply to project grants but it has to be for activity directly relating to the arts. Um, public engagement. So you need to be able to demonstrate how the public will benefit from what you're doing. Sometimes this raises questions when artists and, and creators get in contact and they say, what I would really like to do is, I've been working for 10 years and I want to do something which is about my own development. So actually I could do with a project which may last five months and involves me meeting other groups, working with other types of practitioners and learning from that. Can I apply to project grants? And we say, you can do, but what you have to demonstrate is, although there may not be an immediate benefit to the public, you have to show that that experience will translate so that they, in the medium term and the longer term, the public will benefit from that. It is public money, after all, which is being used to, to support you. Um, creative media is not a requirement, but it's something which at the Arts Council we're interested in. And by that we mean how technology is increasingly being used to create work and to share work. So some of you may have been to the gallery in the arcade um, where Sherry Edgar has been showing her work, which is digitally based work, where actually that, the digital has informed the content, but also how you experience it as well. Unfortunately, it finished today, so if you didn't see it, unfortunately, you missed your opportunity on that. So um, the type of things that we can fund, so it's, it's events, so that might be concerts, it might be gigs, it might be poetry, stand-up, sessions, it can be R&D research and development which I've talked about, it can be activity which tours, so in more than one location, it doesn't have to be performance, it doesn't have to be a visual arts gallery experience, it can be a participatory workshop in which people work with artists to, to find out about a particular technique. Um, 
and it can be about development. And actually, it's important that it does include what is the development for you as applicants, or your organisation, or for those people who are taking part. What we try and avoid is giving money to the same event which happens year after year, but it's exactly the same. That denies other people the opportunity of getting the money. It is obviously a limited amount of money. So how what you're proposing develops what you usually do is important and helpful to do. So who can apply? Individuals, which means it's we get Was anyone here when I did the earlier presentation? Good, because this is a repeat. Okay, so you, if it was, you, you, you'd be just getting the same thing. So, yes, I'm, I'm Simon. I work for Arts Council England. Uh, and as part of my role, I spend a couple of days each week working out of Coventry. So this isn't the only chance that you get to either hear me or speak to me. Uh, I've been here since January and will continue through this year, the next year, and then um, into 2021 as well. I'm joined by a number of colleagues, some of whom are upstairs and I may have spoken to them. They're relationship managers, uh, one of which is Olivia, oh no, it's Bryony who's here, sorry. Who, who does a similar job to it, isn't it? But um, Bryony, who, who's a relationship manager for Visual Arts, our relationship managers actually have far more experience of talking to potential applicants about fineries around project grants. Uh, my role is I sit on the decision making panel, so I see it from that end. So I'm generally in charge of doing the overview presentation. But actually, it is always useful to talk to relationship managers about finer details. Um, as I say, I'm, I'm in the city, so I can connect you up with those people. And we will be doing additional Meet the Funder events going through the year as well. So you get to do that. Um, I'm also joined by Sophia, who is our business administrator apprentice. Uh, a key musician across a multitude of um, instruments and a strong advocate for apprenticeships. So if you're interested in apprenticeships, you get an extra and you can talk to Sophia about that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about our National Lottery uh, Project Grants programme uh, and I'll explain the type of things which it can fund, who can apply to it, how we make our decisions. Uh, for those people who like to write, to take down information and learn that way, and I know that's what I do, that's absolutely fine, but there is, all this information is on our website, and I'll talk about that as well, and in fact, even more information is, is there. So, that's, um, that was this slide, and then I shall do this. So I'm going to give a very brief introduction to the Arts Council. Some of you may know the Arts Council. So we are the National Development Agency for Arts and Culture in this country, which basically means that we advocate for, we develop and we invest in arts and cultural activities. If, if I wanted to sum it up in six words, those so six words would be great art and culture for everybody. So if you like, that's our strap line, that's what we are about. Underneath that there are five goals and I'm going to briefly just touch on them so that you're aware of one. Uh, goal one is excellent, so if you like, that's the great art and culture bit. So we want to support arts and cultural activity which is of high quality, which when people come in contact to it, it has a powerful effect upon them. It moves them, it connects, connects with them. That's the excellence bit. Goal two is for everyone, so it's not just doing it for yourselves. This is public money, so how does it engage with the public? And across a range of projects, we want everybody to feel that the work which the Arts Council is supporting has a meaning <coughs> and an importance and a value to them. Goal three is about resilience and sustainability. So that's about supporting arts and cultural organisations who are going through a period of change. And we possibly all are going through a period of change. But how do those businesses adapt and make sure that they are the strongest financially that they can be to cope with the various changes which they're having to deal with? And the sustainability is about how they note the environmental impact of what they're doing and how can they make sure that that's positive rather than negative. Goal four is to do with the workforce. 
so to make sure that it's a diverse workforce in the arts and culture and people have the opportunity to develop their skills and be up to date and to respond to new changes for instance technology digital work and finally goal five children and young people one because they are practitioners now uh, they are audiences now uh, uh, but they will also become the arts organisations, the cultural organisations, the cultural leaders and the audiences of, of the future. So we want to support that. Running through all, the, all of those is the creative case for diversity. It's useful for you to be aware of that. So uh, many of you are probably more familiar with people talking about the business case for this. And it's, they explain why financially it makes sense that you do something. Uh, the creative case for diversity is about saying that there is a wealth of cultural backgrounds and expertise in this country, which actually, when it's brought together, can create work which is surprising and enriching and amazing. Um, and we want to make sure that the work that we support truly represents the range of practitioners and people within this country. And, and because you weren't at the earlier one, so I'll use the same example, I suppose, an example of that which I saw in November last year, and it was actually on television, it was uh, the dance group Kanduko, who performed as part of Strictly Dancing, dancing with the professionals, and they did an incredible piece in which they were all absolutely excellent, whether they were in wheelchairs or not, and it was uh, a very powerful um, and moving piece which they did. So if you wanted just one example of where I think the creative case is demonstrated, that was, that was it. That's the Arts Council. Um, project Grant. There are a number of funding programmes. The most relevant one which I'm concentrating on as part of this presentation is Project Grants. It's an open programme. You can apply at any time. Uh, if you're applying for under £15,000, you hear within six weeks of pressing the button and submitting your application. If you're applying for over £15,000, then you hear within three months of pressing the button. You can apply for a minimum of £1,000, a maximum of £100,000. There are occasions when it's over that, but it's best they are exceptional. Uh, and if you wanted to know what type of projects they are, we publish all the organisations and individuals who are successful on our website, and you can see the rain and the amounts, so you can see how rare it is for us to make a project grant award of over £100,000. Um, so, it is for arts activity. So it has to relate to an arts activity, and there's a broad range of art forms, which you can, which, which is covered by that term. Um, museum practice, museums can apply if they are accredited for work which directly relates to their core objectives. So if you like, that's the one where there is an exception in terms of art. It could be cultural for accredited museums, but otherwise museums can apply to project grants but it has to be for activity directly relating to the arts. Um, public engagement. So you need to be able to demonstrate how the public will benefit from what you're doing. Sometimes this raises questions when artists and, and creators get in contact and they say, what I would really like to do is, I've been working for 10 years and I want to do something which is about my own development. So actually I could do with a project which may last five months and involves me meeting other groups, working with other types of practitioners and learning from that. Can I apply to project grants? And we say, you can do, but what you have to demonstrate is, although there may not be an immediate benefit to the public, you have to show that that experience will translate so that they, in the medium term and the longer term, the public will benefit from that. It is public money, after all, which is being used to, to support you. Um, creative media is not a requirement, but it's something which at the Arts Council we're interested in. And by that we mean how technology is increasingly being used to create work and to share work. So some of you may have been to the gallery in the arcade um, where Sherry Edgar has been showing her work, digitally based work. 
where actually that the digital has informed the content, but also how you experience it as well. Unfortunately, it finished today, so if you didn't see it, unfortunately, you missed your opportunity on that. So uh, the type of things that we can fund, so it's, it's events, so that might be concerts, it might be gigs, it might be poetry, stand-up, sessions, it can be R&D research and development which I've talked about, it can be activity which tours, so in more than one location, it doesn't have to be performance, it doesn't have to be a visual arts gallery experience, it can be a participatory workshop in which people work with artists to, to find out about, about a particular technique, um, and it can be about development, and actually it's important that it does include what is the development for you as applicants, or your organisation, or for those people who are taking part. What we try and avoid is giving money to the same event which happens year after year, but it's exactly the same. That denies other people the opportunity of getting the money. It is obviously a limited amount of money. So how what you're proposing develops what you usually do is important and helpful to do. So who can apply? Individuals, which means it's, we get a, a lot of applications uh, because it's one of the national lottery programs where individuals can, can apply to us. Arts organisations, uh, museums, libraries again if it's for arts activities. Um, after the first presentation I talked to somebody who runs an engineering factory, commercial organisation, uh, and she's got an idea about how, how, how that can inform the creation of work in Coventry. Uh, and she asked whether the fact that they are a profit-making business, whether that has any implications. And as long as the project is a standalone project, so none of the money which is going on the project goes into the firm, then that's absolutely fine. So that's kind of a quick overview of project grants. Um, this is kind of an indication of what we can't fund. So that's activities that do not align to one of our supported art forms or disciplines. And they're quite broad and they're quite recognisable to you. So kind of poetry, literature, theatre, music, in all its, its, its genres. So it is, it is broad and there's details about that on the website. No potential benefit to the public. So we've kind of talked about that. So there may be down the line, or there may, may be immediate benefit to the public. We're thinking of putting, putting on a, a, a play which will be in the village hall and the public will be invited to come and see. Um, we don't fund general running costs and overheads. So it has to be a distinct project. So it can't be something which you've been doing, say, for 5, 10, 15 years, and you're going, oh, well, actually, now we know about this, we're coming to the Arts Council. To, to do it. So it can't be to keep you going. It has to be for a specific project, as I say, with a beginning, middle and an end. In terms of education, we can't cover the costs which schools are paying for core education. We can, we can, we can support activities which support the core, uh, core curriculum, but not replace it. Um, costs that takes place before we can make a decision. So. We, like other lottery distributors, can't retrospectively fund things which have already happened. Um, international activities where there is no benefit to people in England. It may be international uh, activity where there is clear benefit to people in England. That's fine. Activities that to aim to make a profit or are based around fundraising, i.e. for charities. So that's not how the money can be used for that. Um, underdeveloped applications. The reason why it's underlined is when we do the eligibility check, this is the most common reason why we're unable to fund an application. So it's, it's where somebody's gone, I've had a brilliant idea, I'm going to do this project, and there's very little detail of what exactly that idea is going to be realised, or how it will engage people, how it will be managed, or even details sometimes about the fine, the finances. Sometimes you know budgets don't balance. Any of those things, it's just it's turned down before it gets to assessment phase stage. Uh, it is an application form which you do online via a system called Grantium. Some of you may know Grantium. Some of you may not know Grantium. So. When you, to use Grantium for the Arts Council, you need to log on and set up an account, and it can ten, take 10 days 
for that account to be then approved. So just be aware of that in terms of your, your, your time scales. You can then submit an application. So when you go to submit an application for project grants, first of all, it asks you basic details. So who, who are you? And what is it that you want to do? Um, then there are four criteria where we ask you for information. So the first one is about quality. So it's the quality of that artistic experience which people will have who come into contact with it. So what is your, what's your artistic aim? What is the idea of the project that you want to do? Who will be working with you and what is their track record which will help you achieve it? What is the type of experience which you want either the participants or your audience to go away with? So that's the quality side. The public engagement, who's it for? Sometimes we see applications where people go, it's for everybody. And you go, you're not making it easy for yourself because then what evidence are you going to provide us to go, every single person is going to be connected to this? Other than, we've got 300 followers on Facebook. They'll all come. Well, how do you know that they will all come? So if you compare that to a project whereby somebody says, we're going to do a, a, a singing project with Coventry Football Club fans uh, because Coventry Football Club originally was called Singers. Uh, and therefore, what we're going to do is on five match days in Coventry, as people are going in, we will have people who will be singing. There will be information in the programme telling people what the project is and how they can get involved. And we will, as a culmination of the project, a half time on this date, <coughs> do a singing concert. That's far more detail about who it is you want to involve and how you're intending to do it rather than going everybody. Um, finance. So you need to provide us with a budget. The budget needs to balance, but of course it will do. Sometimes it doesn't. Okay. But it needs to, to balance and it needs to be broken down. You need to explain your experience of managing budgets and what processes you've got in place and the experience that you've got in place to manage budgets. And then management, so what will you be doing? What systems will you be putting in place to make sure that your project happens the way you say and you want it to happen? Who are the people who you'll be working with or you've got within your organisation? And what is their experience which can support your case of going, we can show the Arts Council that this is going to be managed effectively and it will achieve what we say we're going to do. Um, the more money you ask for as you go through, then the more prompts you will get for more information. Okay. So generally under 15k is quite basic. Over that it's more and more and more. So we can make sure that the public money is being used for the purposes that you are saying. Um, advice and guidance. We've got um, on the web page um, we've got detailed information about project grants, including a document which is guidance for those people who are wishing to apply. There's two. One is for under 15k, one is for over £15,000. So that's the amount that you want, you want from us. Included in both are the prompts which we use when we are considering whether we do feel that we can fund your project. So under quality, you can see the questions which we will ask ourselves. And one of my top tips is as you put together your application, before you press the submit button, get somebody who's not directly connected with your project to read the prompts and the guidance and to read what you're saying and ask them whether they think you are making your case according to those prompts. Sometimes I read, I read applications and I go, I don't quite know what it is that you're saying. And I think the prompts are a useful guide for you to kind of go, this is what the arts, if we can demonstrate this, then the arts can to go, yeah, tick, that's, that's there. Um, customer services, so that's the telephone number. There's also an email address. Customer services will also help you with any questions which you've got about Grantium, so the computer system which you need to use in order to, to do your application. They are excellent. I use them for things which I have to do on Grantium. Uh, and they're, they're, they're extremely knowledgeable. 
you'll phone up with a with a, a, a question and they it won't be new to them they will know what to to say and they're remarkably patient as well um, relationship manager so there's a number upstairs um, and you can ask them questions we don't look at draft applications though um, we receive <laughs> approximately 10,000 applications a year we don't have enough relationship managers to talk to everybody who has um, thinking of putting in an application we try if there's an organization which has regularly puts in applications and, and, and is successful we try not to give them any further advice because they know the system they've been successful we try and concentrate our advice on those people who perhaps it's the first time which they have done it Coventry is lucky in that um, we uh, one I'm here so I'm available to provide support but also we will be organizing events like this throughout this year so that there's opportunities for you to meet staff and they will act as critical friends so you can say I'm thinking you're doing blah 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 and they'll go oh you might need to think about how you demonstrate this and what you're you're thinking of, of doing so they're there for advice but just be mindful there's a limited number of them um, there are information guides for various different aspects on the website and I was saying earlier that when, when we had grants for the arts, the first time we had grants for the arts, which is a similar programme, but this has replaced it, people, we, we do sessions like this, and people go, do you know, it would be really useful if there was information, fact sheets, which you had on your website. So we did that, we thought that was a really good idea. Then, when we did sessions like that, we'd have people going, there's too much information on your website, where, I don't know where to start. So what I would say is, it's very clear what, what each information fact sheet says. So you can quickly, just by the title, decide whether it's worth you reading it or not. So for instance, if it's, about, if it's one about capital building projects and you're not thinking of a building project, then you don't need to, to read it. There's one about touring. If what you're proposing to do does involve touring, then I would advise that you look at it. But if it doesn't, you don't need to look at it. There's one about finance and budget. I probably would say it's useful to look, look at that one. So don't feel you need to read them all, but they are available for you to, to use. That's different ways that you can, you can get advice. Um, access support. So there'll be some people that actually it's very difficult for them to get that, that information. And so we do alternative formats of presenting the information, including audio. Um, so that people can, can do that. So that's available. If you, can't, if you need it and you can't locate it on the website, talk to inquiries and they'll be able to help you. And we also provide people who can support organisations and individuals to do applications. That can be built into an application project cost. It's not for them to develop the project or the application for you. It's to support you in the mechanical process of, of putting the information in doing that. Um, how we make decisions. So, um, the first two are done in Manchester. So when you press the sub submit button, that goes to the, uh, the grants team in Manchester. The other three are done in the Midlands, or wherever you are based. So for the purposes of this, it will be done by Arts Council staff who live and work in the Midlands. So the first one is, is, is the simple eligibility check. Somebody will go, is it about the arts? If it's not about the arts, then it won't go any further. Is there a budget? Yes. Does the budget balance? No. It's not eligible. It won't go any further. So it's that simple checking of that. The second is about major risks. So whether we think that actually it is feasible what is being proposed. And if we feel that the risks are too high, then it won't go any further and you'll be notified and it'll be sent back. Assuming that both those things are all right, that it goes to um, a decision meeting. If it's over 15K, there is a process which happens, which is that a relationship manager writes an assessment based on those four criteria, using those prompts which you can see when you look at the guidance. They may not use all of the prompts in their assessment. They will decide which are the most permanent, the per pertinent and relevant ones, and they will concentrate their assessment on that. So they will write an assessment. So that's for applications over 15K. 
applications under 15k go in their entirety to a panel, a decision-making panel. And that decision-making panel will look at the sections of the application about quality and public engagement. They won't look at the finance and the management because that's been checked at the risk phase. And if it's felt that it's feasible, then it will go through. There may be conditions which may be added, but the decision-making panel will concentrate on quality and public engagement. And they will discuss it and then make, make a decision there. So there's no written assessment. If it is over 15k, then the panel will not look at the application, they will look at the assessment, and based on the assessment, they will make their decision of whether it's fundable or not. The thing to bear in mind is, at every panel, some applications will be successful and some won't be successful. And generally, it's a 40% success rate. Okay? So, there will be some where we go, we don't have enough money to fund this one because the budgets are spread out across the whole of the year. So there will be occasions when we might go, if this has gone to another panel, then we'd be able to fund it, but we're not able to fund it now. Or we may go, although the assessor says this is fundable, we think it is comparatively weaker to other applications. Now, in all those circumstances, the person who submitted the application gets that information. So that if they're unsuccessful, they'll get a, a computer. It's, it's done through Grantium, so you get a letter which says, unfortunately, we're not able to fund your project, and this is the reason why. And if it's over 15K, you also get the assessment as well. So you can see where the strengths were, where the weaknesses were, and you may, may want to consider about resubmitting. But if you do resubmit, make sure that you respond to what is in the assessment. Uh, the decision letter may also say, we're pleased to tell you that uh, your application was successful and you've got the money. So you can go ahead and do the project. Um, you have to accept it within one month. So, and you will be prompted that there is a message for you in your inbox. Can you have a look? Um, and we say that generally we will try and contact you if that month is running out and say, is there an issue? Just to remind you, you do need to need to accept it. Um, once you do, if it's under 15k, then that's how the money is. Basically, you get 90% of the money at the very beginning, 10% once you've done your uh, report, activity report at the end of the project. If it's over 15k, then we split it so that it's 15% of the grant up front, 40% halfway through, 10% at, at the end. Um, you need to acknowledge the fact that You've got the money through the National Lottery and the Arts Council, and you need to provide us with the activity report form at the end in order to draw down the 10%. And we don't expect that the activity report will say, this is what we intended to do, and we did everything exactly the you way know, it went absolutely perfectly. There are occasions when it doesn't. But actually, that's sometimes quite interesting because they're learning from that. So don't, don't feel we have to hide the fact. It's actually useful for you to demonstrate that this happened and we learned from it. But also, that's learning for us as the Arts Council as well. So that when we're giving the advice, it might inform the type of advice that we're giving people. Um, one thing which I haven't said so far, and I didn't say in the first presentation, so I'll say now, is partnership funding. We don't fund things 100%. We expect a minimum of 10% of the project cost to be uh, covered by other sources of income. Can that be supporting kind? Yes, that can be supporting kind. So it might be cash, it may be supporting kind. This is fine. <laughs> I just wanted to say, uh, before, before I thank you, uh, I just wanted to say that is, that is one form of, of um, funding which is available. Just be also aware of uh, Awards for All, which is managed by National Lottery Community Fund, who are also upstairs. Uh, their, their projects, they can give money from 300 to 10,000 pounds through Awards for All. It's, it can be activity, which is arts activity, but the emphasis has to be on community. So strengthening communities, bringing communities together. So if that's what your project is about, then have a look at that. Um, if it's about the arts, that is the main thing, then you should be looking at, uh, at arts and project grants. The other, the other program I just wanted to uh, flag is 
developing your creative practice, which is only available for individual artists and creatives. And, and some people have described it to me as, this is the selfish part of money, because it's not about public engagement. So this is money where somebody has been working for some time, and they want a step change, the opportunity for the step change of how they work and their, their, their practice. And they can then apply to us for a specific project which will help them achieve that. Um, it is up to £10,000. It is extremely oversubscribed. So in the last round, I think there were 909 eligible applications. We were able to fund 100 of them. So, so whereas project grants is 40% success rate, um, for this, it's more like 11%.